If you are like me in love to read a good book, then you might be struggling with one of the most important skills when it comes to reading, taking notes from books. And these little steps make a huge difference. It now helps me to stay focused throughout the whole book while allowing me to organize my ideas, connect them and, well, remember them. Hi, Jared here, and today let's talk about note taking. And in this video, I will teach you how to work smarter and efficiently when it comes to note taking, from how to simplify it to how to remember them life. And first, one of the key ideas of good note taking is that it is not necessary to copy and paste lots of information from the text. Instead, you should simplify. Whether you have a Kindle, your phone or a book, copying might be one of the worst habits ever. I was doing it myself, but over time it became overwhelming. And at the end of my books I ended up with thousands of pages of highlighted text, which could sound great because I have a lot of text to play with and learn from but too much information will kill the most important information. And most of the time I had meaningless and irrelevant words, which indeed was doubling down my word count. So simplifying should be about two things, reducing the word count and writing only important details. In order to simplify, you should first of all take a pen or a highlighter if you have a book and your finger if you have a Kindle and highlight the most important section. And this will allow you to make it pop, so you know where to look in case you want to read the book again in the future and this will drive your eyes and brains to the information relevant to you. Also, feel free to use colors if you can, as this can convey different emotions depending on the context, different purposes of words you've just read, and so on. The general rule of thumb is that you should only use between 3 or 4 colors throughout your text, otherwise you might complicate your notes, which obviously might be counterproductive. Ok, so after you've highlighted the most important part of the text, try to simplify and make it even more compact. Try to remove the unnecessary words like the and 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 so on. So we write the sentence while only keeping the most important details and words. For instance, when you talk to a friend, the next day you probably will not remember that he said, I went to a beach Sunday morning at 6 o'clock. I remember that it was windy, but also bright and sunny, although I was expecting to see some clouds here and there. Anyway, Despite that breezy day, I actually enjoyed the moment. Ok, so this is a long sentence, filled with important words, as well as random useless words. And every time I see that in a book, I try to filter out the information and keep the interesting parts. You could also make a bullet point, so in this case it would give something like this. Sunday morning, windy and sunny, lovely moments. Simple and effortless. And finally, an even better way to simplify it would be to remove all the words by trying to picture them. You can draw illustrations and do those for instance that would be self-explanatory. Graphs and charts are also very good at keeping our brains active. And this is what I do for my videos. Instead of only talking to you or writing dozens of lines of words on the screen, I sometimes make a graph to show you the evolution of a company or something else. I also use pictures, animations, sound and so on. This will keep you entertained and help you understand better new information, such as tips, advice, and so on. Alright, when I have a pretty solid base to start and play with, the second thing would be to make it yours. So, what does that even mean? Instead of relying only on the words and information you just have on your book, you should try to personalize it. You know, it's like the iPhone lock screen. It can now be heavily personalized from the size, front, colors and what objects goes on top of it. You have tons of features to play with that will enhance your experience. Right, you could keep a black background with the time on top of that, but that would be pretty boring and interesting, dull and it's no fun. In order to make it more appealing to you, you should first write from memory. At first, all I was doing was copying and pasting the text like a robot would do. This becomes easily boring and it's more a passive way than anything else. But I've learned to make it active. So instead of relying on the book itself, I now rely on my memory. I read a chapter or section if it's relatively short and I write what I memorized from the book. If I wrote and memorized all of the important information, then great, I can go on with the next chapter. But if I forgot some of the things, I will simply read my highlight text again, close the book or the Kindle and try to write down what I memorized again. And secondly, you should use your own words. I remember trying to memorize the text without interpreting it in my own way. I was understanding the meaning of the sentences, but not the deep thoughts, what it truly meant. I needed to write it in a way that made sense to me, and one of the best ways to do this 
Well, by rewarding the sentence using vocabulary you're familiar with, paraphrasing someone else's content is one of the most challenging things you can do when learning new information, especially if you are coming across brand new terminology. However, it will make it easier for you to understand the content and remember it in a way that makes sense to you. Okay, so we now have everything that's needed to efficiently take notes from books. We should now store them effectively, so this will ensure that we will be able to easily find them and read them later, and maybe connect them to other notes and quotes. Is there a difference between typing your notes on a laptop and using a pen and paper? Research indicates there is, and physically writing things down appears to be more relevant. It is a slower task, so students have to be more selective in what they are transcribing. Researchers also have found that the mental processes involved in writing by hand mean students have a deeper understanding of the material. But I personally feel limited with a piece of paper, because first, I cannot carry them with me every time, and that's a real drawback. Thousands of pieces of paper, along with highlighters and a pen, are too much when you have to take a bus, car, travel, or take a walk. Instead, I now rely on my phone or computer, and I use Google Docs for that. To me, it is one of the best ways to store every single piece of information, every single note, every single thought, while helping me to keep everything organized and easy to read. It is packed with great features, it allows me to change the folder colors to better visualize what I'm looking for, I can easily put dates and additional notes, and above all, I can work with others with a click of a button. There you have it, note taking is not that complicated after all, all you need is a few good habits that can take you a few days to practice and use correctly, right, but which will also be highly rewarding for your whole life. And if you've enjoyed this video, then you might like this one, where I talk about the best apps that make my day as productive as possible, or maybe Maybe this one, where I talk about how I managed to stay focused in a distracting world. Thanks so much for watching, feel free to leave a comment down below, subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, I will see you in the next one.